Welcome to Rise and Shine. I'm Shelby Barrett, the Stonette for the Stone Roadie Show, and it's time to wake and bake with Craig Reed and Griff Martin. Good morning. The Stone Roadie Show, podcast number 145, and it's Wednesday, March 20th, 2024, and it's the 28th edition of the Wake and Bake Morning Buzz and uh, Action. All righty then, fellow earthlings, and looky here, looky here. My name's Craig Reed, a.k.a. the Stone Roadie, and this is my co-host, the rocket scientist, Griff Martin. Craig, I see you fixed your email finally. <laughs> yes, I did. I'm a waterhead baby. Yep, I had down there, I had... The Stone Roadie Show at gmail.com. And that's not what it is. That's the Stone Roadie at gmail.com. And I made that mistake once before. Okay. And uh, yeah, I, I did it again, you know. But uh, I'll try not to do that again, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so if that's... anybody wants to enter the contest, I'd suggest while you're on your phone right now, go ahead and email Craig and say, I want to enter the contest. Yeah, yeah, the stone roadie <clears throat> at gmail.com. And, and, and you got stone. all that stuff handy laying around there that you can show, right, Craig, that, that's in the contest? Oh, yeah, yeah, actually, I do. And I got some other stuff that uh, that uh, that uh, James King sent, too. And uh, also our disciple, Dave, yeah, he sent me. I got a package of these today. And I guess he sent one of these to... Uh, most of the survivors, uh, me and Mark, Frank, and Mark Howard, and Paul Wells. Um, and he wants me to sign one of these and send it back to him. And I'll do that there, Dave, <laughs> for sure. But, uh, yeah, this is uh, – we're going to also give one of these away in the uh, in the contest. Yeah, and it's got all some – all pictures of me on there, and I guess there's – a little place where I can sign it there. And since there's a place I can sign it there, I don't mind signing it too much. Yeah. But, <laughs> and then uh, this is one of Griff's paintings that... Uh, that uh, Yeah, and Craig signed it too. I can see there right above my name. And if you look on the tree, yeah. I signed see, the right tree. There where somebody wanted me to sign it. I can't see. Uh, where's my camera? Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah. I can't. Oh, there it is. Yeah, somebody wanted. To, oh, there I go. Oh, there I go. Oh, yeah, there. Looky here. Looky here. See there, Griff <laughs> signature. And then, the, and somebody wanted me to sign it, so I went and got a a red paint gun, uh, pen, and I said I'd sign it right there above where Griff died it in red. And, and then I said, I also have a silver one if you one might want it silver. That goes, yeah, I think I'd like it in silver, but uh, I don't know. If you want it red, if you want it in silver, if you don't want me to sign it at all, I'll sign it on the back. It don't matter. But yeah, that we're giving one of those away too. That's uh, Griff's painting of the, of, the, of the Hell House. Yeah. And so that's two things we're giving away. And then we're giving away one of these uh, things that our buddy, our disciple Dave, he made these too. They're the uh, uh, one more from the Fox photo. And here's, here's my picture right there. <laughs> and uh, uh, let me see. Oh, and then we got one of these stickers that... Uh, Clayton Johnson sent us. Those are from Bill Graham Productions, and they're from like 1987, I think. I think these are what those are from. Yeah, if it's got the rebel flag on there, then that's a collectible yeah. there. And yeah, there's not very really many of these made. These are pretty rare. There's a four by four sticker, and then the, we got this Rossington Collins sticker. That's a three by three, and this this one here you can see shiny. 
it's it you could almost use that as a bumper sticker i think you know it's pretty weatherproof where Clay, clayton said that uh he got these he thought that was going to be a bumper sticker but it's not it's just a regular sticker but that one there you could probably use for a bumper sticker i imagine I don't last imagine it last a whole long time out in the out in the climate but uh Oh, and that, <clears throat> you see, we uh, cousin Figel sent me a bunch of these. These, oh yeah, and I forgot the uh, the million dollar bills. Yeah, I forgot to big bring one of those out too. Yeah, the million dollar bills. We got those to give away. Uh, the letter skitter million dollar bills. Oh, I got a I got a backdrop. I can I'll show one of the show one of those. Oh, let me see. What am I doing here? Oh, looky here, looky here. Oh, oh, there it is. Da 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a million dollar bill. That's a reg regular size of a dollar bill. Giving two of those away so that when you display them on your wall or whatever, you can do it, do it in just a fashion like I'm. We got it displayed right there. The front and the back are showing at the same time, so you can go, looky here, looky here. Yeah, wow. And, and then you can get out your kazoo <laughs> that we're gonna give you and go. So yeah, that's uh, I think that's about all we're giving away on this, on this, um, on this uh, um, turn around of what our giveaway here, whatever I'm trying to say here. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. so put your email back up there, Craig, so everybody can see it and they can they can uh, bombard uh, you with that with that email. And we don't really have a whole bunch. I don't think there's probably even like fifty because they had the wrong email in there <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll take the blame you know if, and if you don't win you can blame it on me because i didn't i didn't get your thing but uh since there's only that many i think i can probably name who who all's in there <laughs> well i think now you'll probably get some more emails because you got the right email up there so <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah i know you ain't got your stickers yet i ain't sent i ain't sent any of the stickers out yet but i got i got everything wrote down as soon as i get something i write it down yeah and craig's on, still on, suffering on from list, that but, binge you know. that he went on with the neighbor <laughs> he ain't been right since you know kind of <laughs> like sid barrett <laughs> Yeah, my my sister, she called me the other day. She's going, you know, be careful, you know. She's 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 ninety, you know. I'm seventy three. She's ninety, you know. She, guys, she's still sharp as a tack, though. Hey, hey, hey Gail, <laughs> I'm being good. <laughs> I'm trying, anyways. <laughs> but, and we got some pretty cool stuff we can talk about here too, Craig. Um, we got. Uh, another oh, wait, wait, uh, a wait a minute, wait a minute. Here some more go. stuff, yeah, 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 yeah. I got oh, some. yeah, you got those things that guy sent too. That you oh, god, show. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for reminding me, yeah, yeah. You oh, got to show this, all this, that. Here, I got this a guy, uh, what, what's his name? Uh, uh, Ron and Billy Latrell. They went to Las Vegas and they find this ashtray now, the middle of it's green, so my green screen's messing with it. And, <laughs> so uh yeah but it's an ashtray Wait, well, on my end it looks like you can see through the ashtray your background yeah that, that's crazy. what you can if i if i change my background it'll change it'll change with it here watch this yeah because cool. <laughs> it's green on the on the yeah. thing here so so yeah that's the way a green screen works so yeah we got that and then oh uh, let me move all this other stuff here oh my gosh so much stuff all right uh who was it oh my sheets here uh, uh oh dog on it 
Oh, go ahead and say something while I'm fooling around here. <laughs> well, you guys stick around at the, at the end of the, just like the last uh, couple podcasts. Okay, we got the Mike O'Hara tapes. We got Sheriff J.P. McClendon is uh, going to be on the Mike O'Hara interview at the end of this. So stick around. For that. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Uh, John and Philomena Morrow sent in $25 that I got today, uh, and they would like a sticker and they'd like me to sign the back of it, I guess. So, yeah, I'll send that out as soon as I send them other ones out. And then, uh, James Cross, we showed him last week, he sent in 50 bucks. Well, when he sent in that fifty bucks, he sent all these sent in all these other things for us to sell. Uh, let me see. Let us entertain you, uh, Garden State Art Center. Here's one where Kathy Gazi lives up there. And this is for for the uh, oh, which band is this for? Huh, let me see. Oh, poopy doo doo. Oh, I guess it's. I can't find the. Uh, oh, Rossington Collins. Rossington Collins band. This is a pamphlet that the Garden State Art, 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 Garden State Art Center sent out for the Rossington Collins band. It's, and it's about, oh, five inches wide and about 10 inches long, I guess. <laughs> so. That's green too, isn't it, Craig? Yeah, it's green, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then this, I don't know, some of, some of you might have seen this. This is a booklet from the, from the, from the tribute, Leonard Skinner tribute, and it's a tour booklet, and, uh, and there's the back of it, and, uh, and it's got, oh, I don't know how many pages, but there was the band at the time. Yeah, cool picture. That was the, the, the tour booklet. Carol Bristow, Randall Hall. Yeah, with all the uh, yeah. equipment. And that that's over at uh, Jacobs Avenue. That's when we had everything over at uh, Jacobs Avenue still. That's so. a cool pick. Cool pick. Yeah. Already, already so got that. Had a, had a clean haircut. Yeah, that is when I was telling you about Artemis. I, I don't know if I uh, told you all about it or dreamed. Yeah, you said, it. yeah, you didn't recognize he, him. He, when he showed, showed up, up and nobody recognized him. That's when that was, yeah. yeah. And then you got some of you have probably seen the Leonard Skinner song book. <laughs> we have one of those. And he gave me all this stuff to uh, to run on to run either run on eBay or auction off here, uh, you know. So if you guys want to place some bids on it on this stuff, you know, this is one of those songs. Yeah, books. just email Craig an offer. Yeah, just uh, there's one of the open pages here. You know, they're pretty cool. Just all the song book. Pretty cool. Uh, and then uh, got one of these. Another uh, one of those uh, pamphlets. This is actually from, from uh, well, this is after the, after the plane crash. Yeah, and I believe that's the hat that Ronnie had on on the plane that white hat yeah yeah gene tells a story how ronnie gave him that hat and then ronnie had to borrow it back from him because his hats didn't come in and he needed that hat to, and so yeah that's the, it, same, uh, that's the same hat then yeah yeah so it's one of them tour books yeah yeah, I believe that's the hat that he had on the plane. We have that. And yeah, if we don't get any offers on it on on here, we'll 
Well, uh, put it up on eBay. And then here's a uh, uh, three in rock band, all, uh, almost uh, six killed in an uh, airplane crash. It's a newspaper article from the crash. We have that. And then we got uh, Capitol Theater, one of these uh, show programs uh, from Rossington Collins Band. You know, got some of some of these. Actually, I guess we have. Uh, no, these are different. Here's another one from the Capitol Theater. Uh, for the Rodston Collins band, I guess we played there a couple, couple different times. This one talks about the Henry Paul band in the middle there. I guess they played with us. The Capitol Theater, that's up around Kathy Godsey's neck of the woods then too. And then the, uh, garden, another one from the Garden State Arts Center for the Rodston Collins. These are all show show uh, things they gave away at the shows, and uh, and uh, this is the way we are see <laughs> a news uh, one of their news uh, things from uh, that's some pretty cool stuff. News P.O. Box zero 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 from Beverly Hills, California. <laughs> Some pretty cool stuff there. Yeah, this is from the fall and winter of 1981. So, that looked pretty cool in a frame, you know? Yeah. Yeah, something something different. And uh, here's a, a circus magazine with uh, an artic article about Rossington Collins in it. If you're into circus magazine... Uh, History, Ross and Collins. Uh, as you can see, he sent me a bunch of stuff. Here's one for Leonard Skinner from in the Circus Magazine. <laughs> That's an oldie there. Yeah, it is an oldie. Yeah, Circus That was magazine. Kiss on the back? Leonard Skinner right there. And... Uh, Sean Cassidy, <laughs> blue yeah, as the call. And an uh, had, had, had kiss on the back, yeah. I bet old Jimmy Withers would like to have that one. <laughs> kiss band. Oh, yeah. Old Circus Magazine from, uh, oh, what year is this? Uh, oh, a dollar and a quarter. God, it don't say what year it is. I don't see it. Oh, well. Huh. Uh, Hit Parader. Uh, Aerosmith. Uh, Leonard Skinner. Ronnie Van Zant remembered, so this must have been post-airplane <laughs> crash. Hit Parader magazine. And, uh, you know, some of these we might even take a a, bun, a bundle deal on. You know, we'll be like the pawn. Yeah. We'll, we'll do a bundle with you <laughs> for all these things. You know, make us a make us a deal. You know, here's a Leonard Skinner uh, British one more from the road official tour program, and this one. Uh, this is an actual, uh, yeah, this is an actual one for the band, you know. It must have been pre-airplane crash. Yeah, the miss, yeah, this is uh, Leonard Skinner, British on the road. Yeah, official program. So, yeah, this is uh, a pre-airplane crash one. And that's it. Yeah, that's all we got here. And then there's that stuff behind me, those two, those three posters, not the briefcase, but the three posters back there. And, you know, hey, man, offer us a deal on all of that stuff. And 
and you know you yeah. never know you might get it and we'll mail it all off to you and it's yours and for your for your collection room your leonard skinnard collection room and somebody called me yesterday and they're going to send me an ed a, a, a t-shirt with ed king's signature on and i'm sorry i've I've, I've forgotten your name whoever it was that called me but oh no i remember who it was it was um uh, steve jones yeah how about that steve jones that was who it was yeah called. it's not my not my buddy steve jones from the radio station but a different steve jones because they had me fooled too <laughs> so and then right. i got a uh greg i got a text from uh your buddy timothy harner and he said, Artemis will not come on the podcast. He, he said that, uh, if his daughter wants to come on, that's her business, which is good. You know, you can't have them both. Maybe we get her. So, uh, but I think maybe Artie will change his mind here one day. Um, so don't lose hope on Artemis coming on here. I, we'll, we'll keep working. Him. If you're listening to Artie. Come on, man, Artie. Come on, buddy. <laughs> I heard that he's got some kind of an idea that uh, <clears throat> that I'm making uh, that I'm doing this and and making money on it, and I don't know where he got that. Uh, well, he just got, got he knows that, that Gene comes on the podcast, and him and Gene are you know not getting along too well, and so you know that's that whole you know you can't ever tell who don't like anybody kind of deal with all he's got to do it all he's got to do is call some of the survivors mm -hmm. and they'll say hey man he sending me i've sent me four thousand dollars last year no five thousand dollars we sent everybody five thousand dollars last year yeah and, and he, and sent he me could $5, get five thousand dollars last year it's uh it's no joke <laughs> no it's no joke and we and you this, know like we show we show every penny we, we, we take in, we show it right here on the screen. So, you know, and we're still taking in donations and we <laughs> yeah, appreciate yeah, we still, all those donations. Yeah. We still got money to send out here. <clears throat> Just trying yeah, to so, build some up. And we got things to auction off that we're going to, um, give to the survivors too. So we're bumping right along. We're, we're, uh, doing the best we can. <laughs> you know it's it's, it's uh oh people tell me oh god you guys are doing so good on that podcast and man i I tell you what like last week i was mumbling and jumbling around and, and, and i was calling people i was telling people they were mentally ill you know and I, you know it, you know and there's a difference between mental illness and intelligence you know I, you know there is a difference there's some people that are really intelligent that that are that are also seriously mentally ill but there's the you know, I, I i know i was uh, uh, pointing toward the mentally ill last week but uh, after listening to some of the stuff that the media and uh, the government throw at you people and you big guys have been gobbling it up and eating it all all these years there's some seriously stupid people out there too <laughs> seriously stupid I mean, good God Almighty! How did you people let the government get so much control? Well, instead of saying taxes and stuff, you y'all are nuts, man. Instead of saying stupid, <laughs> Greg, just call them liberals. <laughs> oh my God, naive, gullible—I don't know what you want to call them, but my God Almighty! Whew. Yeah, I don't know how you people let this stuff all have, get so out of, and it's been like that for years. It's not like just. You guys just got stupid all of a sudden. People have been stupid for for decades. My God, this has been going on for decades. They've been pulling this shit on you people, and you you don't get it, man. I mean, open hey, your eyes. You know, George Carlin had it figured out. If you ever oh my God, to, yeah, he had it figured out. Oh if my you ever God. listened to George Carlin back in the even in the seventies, he had it figured out. Yeah, he 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 had the fat people all pegged too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, he, yes. If you just if you want to know the truth, just listen to him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he knew how to tell the truth. <laughs> they probably uh, those Hollywood people probably approached him and tried to get him to 
sell his soul to the devil like my you know like well i ain't gonna mention any names i might get in trouble but yeah so he probably told him to put it where the sun doesn't shine <laughs> boy, oh boy. Hey, craig we still got a, uh some a bunch of questions left over from um those yeah, other, yeah that pot that um uh, uh yeah we had a few up. yeah thank you people for uh, for uh you know, for, you know, helping us out, you know, if I ask for questions, it's because we ain't got nothing to talk about, you know. <laughs> you, you want me to go over them with you? Yeah, ask? yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of combobbled here. To, I don't know where I'm Okay, start. well, the first question here, uh, this one guy asked, and I, I'm not going to mention names, but uh, did you um, do any work? uh with april wine uh, did they tour with journey do you ever see april wine touring with journey you know anything about april wine i know they're oh, I, I know the wine. name but i yeah. can't remember all those bands that toured with us you know <laughs> i god i was yeah their their lead singer just died uh, a couple months ago we we toured with so many damn bands. They were a great Canadian band, April Wine. They had some really great songs. Man, I can't remember all the people. I was, you know, I was, I was, in, I was in shock for at least a decade after that crash. So when I was with Journey, I was still in shock. I mean, really. Then uh, another guy asked. Um, were were you in the studio with Foreigner when they did any of their recording? And if you did, how did it compare to Leonard Skinner's recordings in the studio? Yeah, I was in the studio in New York City with the Double Vision album, with the whole album. I was there for the whole thing. I was oh yeah, I was a guitar roadie, so I had to be there for the whole for you know because there was Mick Jones and. Ian McDonald and and the bass player uh, uh, Roy, I think his name was. Um, but yeah, they you have when you're a guitar roadie tech or roadie or whatever you want to call them. Yeah, you got to be there in the studio uh, with them. You know, they keep their instruments and yeah, which is cool. You know, cool yeah, as you hell. Be right there. So I was there. You know, the, the whole Double Vision album. I was there right there in the studio and. Um, if they basically recorded basically the same style. You do your your basic track, your bass and your drums, and you get down a basic track, and then you add guitar, guitar uh, rhythms and leads and vocals. Usually the vocal goes on at the end. So it's all basically, they basically did it the same way. Yeah, it. I'm I'm thinking it's gotten a lot easier now with the uh, digital, but you know a lot of people like to use the old school and the old uh, consoles. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. hearing that they like to break out the old consoles, the analog stuff, the yeah. analog stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's <laughs> becoming popular. Like vinyl, a lot of people like listening to vinyl. It has a better sound. I can't tell the difference. My ears are so burnt out. I can't tell the difference. You know, I, well, that's I, what they say about the Muscle Shoals, uh, that uh, Muscle Shoals studio. And I and I went there, you know, when we did the podcast and when I interviewed those people, and and uh, they said the whole reason that that sounded so good is because it had a basement underneath a wooden floor, and the acoustics in there were phenomenal. Um, I heard Oliver Anthony comment that they did their album in a church. Mm -hmm. And used the whole uh, acoustics of the church, and it really sounded good. And that old, that old, yeah, yeah. I but bet that, it would. Then somebody asked the, uh, "What's the story behind Alan and uh, Artemis Pyle, Alan Collins, Artemis Pyle, and that monkey with the whiskey bottle?" Oh yeah, I saw that one. You know, all I remember of that was at a some kind of a promotional party up in New York. And, uh, and, uh, like always, like somebody says, yeah, Craig, he'll say he was there, but he don't remember nothing about it, you know, but I don't, I don't remember nothing about <laughs> it. I could make up stories and you wouldn't know the difference, but, uh, 
I, you know, it would just be stories. You know, I don't. That's I how don't, you know Craig's honest. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember a lot about it. I, the only thing I remember about that that night is I had a, I, I had a briefcase. My in my briefcase, I had a whole bunch of money in my briefcase, and and I was in New York City, and I actually handcuffed my briefcase to my arm, and had it under my coat. So like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Those are kind of things that you that are easy to remember. I think you know? <laughs> I don't a lot remember a lot about the party. I remember the monkey. That was funny. That was funny as hell. Was he actually drinking the whiskey? Oh God, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. did he yeah. get drunk? It, I I don't remember. Well, where did he come from? It was Zippo or Zip or Zip the monkey or something. Somebody had that monkey there. And, um, yeah, that's all <laughs> I remember. Sorry. They couldn't, they couldn't have given it to a better guy, Alan. Oh, <laughs> that was hilarious. That was hilarious. It was. Yeah. I think he's on roller skates, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he might still be alive. You never know, man. Some of those oh, monkeys. God, they that was fifty years ago. I know, but they had. Um, I think it was Cheetah from Tarzan lived a long time. And, and um, <clears throat> yeah, so those monkeys, man, they, they live. And uh, somebody asked, was Skinner touring with the Who when the fans got killed in Ohio? No, that was in Cincinnati. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, uh -uh. and no, uh, that was uh, that was a uh, after. I said, no, I don't know when that was. Uh, but no, it wasn't the same tour. Then uh, somebody asked, "How did how did you and I meet?" And I think I told that a couple times, you know, because Craig. I remember I was on Facebook, and Craig was on Facebook, and and he was posting all this crap i mean it was <laughs> talking about fat people and the cigarette smokers and just slamming everybody and i was uh, and i was yeah. just laughing my ass all i remember is uh, as you you said i'd love to post stuff like that but because of my job i can't <laughs> yeah <something> like that <laughs> yeah that, as a matter of fact a job with you. nasa if they 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 get in there and check. Look at that! This guy's putting on his Facebook page. I couldn't. <laughs> yeah, imagine. yeah, yeah. I can't, so I can't I post stuff like that, but that, I'd like to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and I was taken up for Craig because people were like slamming him. I didn't even know who he was, and then I went to uh, help Joe Crimp set his drums up, and I was listening to him. I believe it was at the Mercury Moon across from Whitey's Fish Camp, and these and these big fat girls were out there dancing. And then <laughs> and Joe Crimp goes, "Boy, Craig would like those girls." And I say, "You talk about that guy on Facebook? Yeah, Craig. You know he's got something about these fat girls." <laughs> and, I, and I said, "And I said, well, who is that guy, man?" I said, "He's he's pretty damn crazy." And he goes, well, he was the the roadie for Leonard Skinner, and I was like, "Get out of here!" And I'd already known Gene, and you know, and been hanging out with Gene for a while, and uh, and you know, Joe Crimp. I, I mean, I just knew you as a guy on Facebook, and then, then I think we started talking, and then um, I wanted to come up and uh, and interview you, and you said, "Well, come on up," and then <laughs> and then I think Joe. Somebody told me good luck. I ain't never heard anybody really interview Craig. I, that'd be, that would be a, a, that would be something I'd like to see. And so, you know, and I went up there and we went to the rock and roll hall of fame. And, uh, of course we did that a couple of times since then, but with John Neal, yeah. And that, well, yeah, you John came, up Neal. My, came up to my class reunion that one time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And then we, yeah. Couple of times, yeah. and 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 John Neal, man, he's I like that guy. He's he's <laughs> he's, he's hilarious. 
<laughs> yeah, so that's how Craig and I met. And he, then, uh, yeah, John John lives down there where those Piketon murders happened, and me and John went to that party where those two those yeah. guys that killed those people were carrying our beer. <laughs> <laughs> that's swear to God, yeah, another yeah, that was another one of my Forrest Gump moments. Well, that is. <laughs> I was looking at a picture of you at you know you were at Gary's funeral, and. uh and uh, and then uh who was it uh you, there's like a several famous people in that picture and you were in the background <laughs> paul yeah rogers. my hair's gray and yeah, that was paul last rogers year and, and i don't dye my hair or nothing and on this podcast it looks brown but in that in that thing down there my hair was gray <laughs> yeah it had paul rogers and ricky it is gray, but i don't know why it looks brown on this <laughs> podcast and you were in the background like forrest gump <laughs> uh, yeah yeah i was just standing there yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you you're always at the right place at the right time that's for sure i had but, no idea that picture was taken yeah. too like, bad you weren't turned around the other way because that would have yeah i had no idea yeah i didn't even i didn't even realize that was paul rogers i didn't recognize him when he was up there talking i went he said i'm a singer and he said something like that. i said i'm a singer and i was going who in the hell is that guy i didn't even recognize him <laughs> no i didn't recognize him <laughs> oh craig yeah and then then we got another question here on second helping were you one of the people doing hand clapping on the uh they call me the breeze yeah 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 it was us in there yeah, yeah? you were doing hand clapping mm -hmm. yeah so you're you're recorded hand clapping wow there was a whole room full of people in there but yeah i was in there yeah if somebody was clapping out of time, it was probably me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to go back and slow it down and see if we can pick you out. <laughs> so, well, you remember that? What did they say? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember they that. They say, yeah. okay, you guys, we need you to clap. So everybody clap. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, there's a, there's the answer to that question and he remembers <laughs> that. So, you no, know, I, re I do remember that. You know, that's great. Uh, <clears throat> that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh boy, this is the first time I'll ever be recorded. <laughs> and somebody mentioned something about, they wanted to, uh, get Bob Burns and Ed King, a headstone. I don't know, man. Uh, you know, if Bob Burns or Ed King has a Sharon, headstone, but Sharon would take care of that. If she... Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. I don't, I'm not sure where Ed's buried, but, um, or Bob Burns, but that is a good question. Maybe if anybody knows, they can let us know where those guys are buried, but, uh, it would be cool if they were all in the, in the cemetery that, uh, down there in Jacksonville, which I didn't even know my grandfather's buried, not probably 50 yards from Ronnie. And I didn't even know that. And I mean, that's kind of crazy. Cause I don't really have any, a whole lot of big ties to Jacksonville. So that's just kind of like a weird thing. And he was a musician too. So, yeah. I went and saw uh, Jim Morrison's grave in, in in France when we were there. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I was over there uh, videotaping that guy's house where uh, Jim Morrison was born, he said that they were trying to get him buried at that house in Melbourne, Florida, because um, the family didn't want him in that in that uh, cemetery over there in France. <laughs> And he wouldn't let him do it. He wouldn't let him. I guess you're allowed to be buried at your birthplace legally. So really, that's what he told me. yeah. Oh wow. Huh. Yeah. So, hmm. That's kind of weird. And then a '79 volunteer jam was Freebird, the only song played um, during that volunteer jam. And why did Gary? play bernice instead of the sg the 79 volunteer jam um, oh yeah i was there charlie daniels yeah and i don't remember that and i was there i was there like their guitar roadie i went i, I went down there just to be their guitar roadie <laughs> yeah did they only play one song and it was Freebird? 
As far as I remember, I, I can't even remember hardly. And Leon didn't even play. Leon was there, but he wasn't even in condition to play. He was, uh, his arm was still all messed up. Why would have Gary used um, Bernice instead of uh, the SG? I don't remember that. Yeah, that's, that's, I don't remember that. Yeah. You, can you think of why he would do that, though? I don't. I know. I. I. I don't. I don't remember. I, I. Him and Alan went. I don't. Maybe. Maybe he just took one guitar. I don't remember. I even went there and did good their, their guitars, and, and they only had two guitars from what I remember. Um, yeah, probably. It sounded like a logistical thing. They probably. You know. They just probably really got on a plane up. with one guitar each, and he took Bernice. I guess. Yeah, probably. That sounds like it. That's, I don't that's remember really that. Question. That's a good question, and I don't. Re yeah. I don't remember. I don't I expect that he. I don't know. I I don't remember that. Yeah, and I was there. I was their guitar roadie. <laughs> I went there just to be their guitar roadie. It was me and my friend Tim Starcher and my my fifth ex wife went down there. Then there's a guy. His name's Edward J. Crowley the Third. You know him. You said you gave no. him some um, Rossington Collins band passes um, for the, uh, did I write this down wrong, Calderon Concert Hall in Hampstead? You know where that's at? <laughs> no. Uh -uh. Said no. Uh, he hung around with Gary and Alan a lot backstage and that they all got into a big circle and said a prayer before. Okay, yeah, I remember that question. He asked if that was something yeah. that they did. Uh, yeah. yeah they, you know, if you if they were hanging around with you for a little bit and you were standing there, they would bring you on, you know. Didn't do it often, no. Well, occasionally. You know. yeah, but they always said a prayer before the concert. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they yeah. always do, yeah. They probably still do that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sure they still do now, yeah. Yeah. They always did. Got in. At first, it was more like a football team huddle, you know, <laughs> or, uh, you know, you know, or, uh, you know, just gather around, get in a circle. And, yeah. You know, kind of a, you know, more, more of a pep talk than a religious circle at first, I think. Yeah. I, you know, like a good luck pep talk. Yeah, like a. Like a football team going into battle, or yeah, the, they they didn't do that. Though. Going into battle, you know, they didn't do that kind of stuff though. Uh, pre pre plane crash, right? Oh yeah, oh, they yeah. did. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh cool. Well, yeah, that's cool. that that that's when it was more like gladiators going into battle, you know. <laughs> yeah. Circling, uh, you know, uh, you know. Uh, <clears throat> gather all the energy into one source <laughs> you know yeah. you know well that's kind of like something that i guess that uh a ritual that they adapted yeah. and adopted yeah you got yeah you kind of get in a get in a circle and feel the energy man yeah 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 that'd be cool to be in a you circle know, you, know, you feed those, off yeah. the other, as everybody's energy yeah you get in a circle you know it's just yeah that's what it's all about yeah. You did your light, right foot in, you put your right foot out, you put your right foot in, and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. <laughs> do the See, Craig, Craig can't remember a lot of things, but he can remember songs and stuff like that, you know? <laughs> I can't can remember, remember every word, every word to every song and Frank Sinatra stuff and all that stuff. And people, yeah. how do you remember the words of those? Sometimes it could it be like a, a it, was it could be like a savant thing. That's wild. All these crooner <laughs> songs. Yeah. When I was growing up, all my sisters used to listen to Nat King Cole and all those crooners, you know? Yeah. Well, if she's 90. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then a guy here says, um, uh, what do you think Alan's favorite guitar was and what kind of pickups did he use in it? 
Uh, we went uh, through that the last time the explorer would have to be his favorite. Yeah, yeah that's, that's not quite the same question, but it's kind of the same question. And then in the early <laughs> days, who was the equipment truck driver? That was probably you. Oh, my it? God. We had a guy that, up, up at that baseball game. When you see everybody up at the baseball game where Ronnie's batting and you see Gene Odom and and and, uh, and uh, everything. We had a bus driver. His name was Porky. <laughs> his name was Porky. Uh, that was his like handle or whatever. Yeah, and he was uh, he was our bus driver. But but um, uh, uh, the band had one. His, his, uh, Sammy was his name. Then that, is that the, the one that uh, uh, Ronnie wore the shirt, mm -hmm. Sam, that work shirt? Sam. Sam, yeah, Sam, yeah. He was a band's bus driver for a while. But this was says equipment truck driver. Oh, equipment truck driver. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, uh, God, well, who were our truck drivers back then? Uh, it's Dale Macon now, but back then I don't remember. We had uh, Shoko, or, uh, I think, uh, yeah, Shoko Trucking, I, or I don't think it was upstaging. I don't think they had, to, no, no, they were, yeah, it had to have been Shoko Trucking. Well, you you uh, came up from, from the early days, and I mean, you got to see, you know, it go from, from just a van to semi trucks <laughs> yeah yeah we used to travel in big blue the equipment truck that lacy put an engine together and stuff yeah big blue that's the one where the band's in the in the back of the truck with uh their first manager it was kevin and dean and ronnie and and their first manager in the back standing in the back of the equipment truck yeah and there was another plane before the a Convair 240, right? Yeah, that was, nice, that was a nice that was a nice lot nicer plane. It was a turboprop. It was a lot nicer. That 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 uh, the um plane company had two planes and that was the the plane that we had and then they had this other plane and they somebody else wanted the I don't know if it was Aerosmith or not wanted the wanted the other plane and they talked us into talk them into getting the, the, the older plane for a lot less money, you know, and, uh, yeah, we gave up that, that nicer plane and that's when we lost our, the pilot less long. He didn't want to fly that plane. He, mm -hmm. he wanted to fly the, I think the, Kenny Peden was talking newer, about that in that the, interview. The he was plane. Yeah. I think the other plane had Rolls Royce engines in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it was that. a nice plane, and Les wanted to fly that plane. He didn't want to fly that old plane, you know. And then uh, this guy, the second part of that question, um, did the band uh, have a deal with PV? And I'm sure they did, right? Yeah, PV yeah, I dance. saw that one. Yeah, they got all their stuff for free. Yeah. It was all free, yeah. I, and went, then, I, I set up that... Well, I didn't set it up, but after the deal was written in stone, I, I was the one that more or less kept after uh, Joe Barnes left. Then it was uh, Joe Osborne kind of <clears throat> was new uh, Hartley Peavy pretty well, but I was the one that always took, even with Ross and Dick Collins and Alan Collins, when we needed new stuff. I was the one that take to take it uh, to Meridian, Mississippi, and and get it all taken care of. Get there was the always that natural big wood cabinets and the tweed cabinets and all that stuff. Yeah, there was that big rumor that used to go around that people thought that they put Marshall electronics in the PV no. cases. Uh, yeah, no. Remember that? No, they didn't do that at all. No, it was it was all PV stuff. Yeah, and then when me and Artemis uh, uh, put together, Artemis told me he didn't like PV. He told me, no, no, he used, uh, you know, he used their amps and their mixing board and their monitors and everything. You know, we had, we even had monitors on his drum riser. We even put uh, poles 
poles up on the ends of the on the riser and with speakers pointed down you know, at him you know it's pretty cool but yeah it was all right well i had a monitor board that ran everything and amps and everything i'd like to do a rig rundown with Artie. maybe he'll instead of coming on the podcast he'll let me come do a rig rundown with him on his drums <laughs> i'll work on that see if i can't get get him to let me do that um then, I don't uh, know. Maybe, I've talked. I've talked. I talked to. Her, I've talked to <laughs> Artemis. You know, and I, I've talked to him about going to a show. And like I said, I don't ask people to come on the podcast. You know, so we've never talked about that. So, you know, but I, I, I don't. You know, I kind of, I don't understand what the problem would be. You know, he does a lot of podcasts with other other, other people, but I don't know kind of weird <laughs> yeah he just got some miscommunication that he thinks something's happening that isn't and he just needs somebody to sit him down and explain you know it's kind of like misinformation just like the government you know it's well he hates trump I, I know that he hates trump i don't know why yeah and he knows I, uh, well that's like kind of say trying to <laughs> say that you're on the titanic and it's sinking and you can't stand the Lusitania or whatever ship that was that was going to rescue them. Say, no, nah, I hate that ship. Don't send it over here. Uh, you know, I mean, you might hate him, but that's the only hope we have in my biased opinion, Craig. A lot of people hate Trump. I don't know. I've always liked the guy. He's you know, kind of eccentric. I like people that are eccentric. <laughs> well, at least he... He he's the only president we've ever had that when he said he was going to do something, he did it. it it's funny, like Hill, Hillary and Oprah and all them people thought that thought he would be a, a wonderful president until until he ran for president. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they all he said, we'd love to see him. you run for president. You're a, you're a businessman that couldn't be bought, and then when he decided to, they hated him. <laughs> Kind of weird. Well, they loved him when he was giving yeah. them all campaign donations. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Well, it's a strange, strange world we live in, man. I think Mag Mad Magazine went out of business at the wrong time. <laughs> yeah, that was a good Whoa. magazine. And then, here's another question, and this is we've been over several times. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, how did Ronnie get the name Wicker? <clears throat> well, from some guy in high school, his name was Van Wicker, and he was a little bit fruity, and they all used to make fun of him. And his name, you know, Ronnie's name was Van Zant, and, and, and the guy's name was Van Wicker, you know. And, and I don't know, they would make fun of this guy. And they, yeah. they, you act like that Wicker, that Wicker character, and then they just start <laughs> calling him Wicker, you know. But his, yeah. only his really good friends called him that, and guys from high school are re really good friends of his, you know. And I just kind of heard it off the off the shoot, you know. People yeah. kind of referring to him as Wicker, and I remember one time I go, "Hey, Wicker!" He kind of looked at me real funny and laughed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even know the backstory. I had, had no clue. Yeah, it was after he was dead before I ever found out what what, what the name Wicker meant. Then this guy says uh, he loved your wheelchair story, and oh, oh I could, saw that one. <laughs> all he could think about was, could you pop a wheelie if it was a fat person wheelchair? Oh, have you seen those things? My God, you, you go into the waiting room and the, the chairs are four feet wide. I know. <laughs> They're four feet <laughs> wide, I swear to God. Uh, and the wheelchairs, yeah. I don't know how, I don't know because, you know, the, those big fat people, their their bone structure is just a normal size bone structure you know so i don't know how their arms would be any longer than mine you know their, their bones are the same it's just their bodies yeah. they got to make so i don't know how they would reach those wheels either but yeah yeah no i'm an expert in a wheelchair man i still am <laughs> I can ride a wheelie like a son of a gun in a wheelchair. But can you do? Can you pop a wheelie with a fat person wheelchair? I never. I've never been in a fat person <laughs> wheelchair. 
<laughs> I can't see, imagine. See what people think about now that you've uh, awakened them to fat oh, people, Craig. Oh, that's God. what they do, man. They see stuff and they go. I go to the I go to the doctor. <laughs> I got to laugh at the size of the chairs in there for these people, man. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> anyway just one more question here and then we could probably wrap this thing up um how did the uh, band members personal effects get uh from the plane crash back to them guy asked which well is like i said like, like i said once before my nurse took me before i was released she took me over to the sheriff's station and uh it was like in a gymnasium and uh, it, all they had tables, and all the stuff was just stacked up on tables. And I went over there, and those four by eight tables that was all stacked up on all this stuff. And I went over there, and they had it all laid out. And I just went over there and picked out what what stuff was mine, you know. And then when when uh, after the the journey tour was over, and I called gary and he said we're putting a band back together and you know you with us and i went down to jacksonville and as soon as i got there they handed me the warehouse key and said you know go over there and put the equipment together and i opened the door and it was just full of all the band's clothes and stuff you know so i've you know i mean i couldn't even get to the equipment everything was covered in clothes i mean it was just ridiculous and so i started you know saying well this was ronnie's this was steve's this was dean's this was you know the girls you know and uh, there was a, a whole the dump dumpster a uh, half a dumpster full of clothes i threw away that i had no idea who they were and i you know i took everything i wreck it right before i threw anything away i called everybody and called um steve's wife and, and ronnie's wife and dean's parents and and uh you know whoever was involved billy and kevin and everybody to come and get their stuff you know and uh and they came and everybody got their stuff but dean's parents and steve and his wife and and ronnie's wife they they said man we don't want any of that stuff you know it would bring back bad memories <clears throat> and, you know and uh when you uh, were at the sheriff's office there and you were getting your stuff did other than your Coke spoon, was there anything else missing? Oh, missing? Yeah. Uh, you remember? Uh, there was a lot of stuff. Yeah, there was a lot of... All my suitcases were busted open. I had those aluminum suitcases, and they all busted open. And, uh, yeah, there was a, a lot. I couldn't do an inventory, but, yeah, there was a lot of stuff that came up missing. Did you, st you still have those busted suitcases? No, no. I sold every one of those th tank suitcases, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Were they dented from the crash and stuff? Oh, they were twisted up like beer cans. I had toys yeah. in them and stuff, yeah. Yeah. I think one of them made it over to when the monument did the unveiling. Somebody had a, a briefcase there. That might have been Paul Welch's briefcase. Uh, but matter of fact, I have one of I have a when I, I have a newspaper article up here in a frame. I'm not going to try to get up and get it down, but it's got a picture of me standing out here in the yard with one of those suitcases standing in front of me. I'll I'll bring it on next time I have. It. Yeah, that'd be cool. So I'll show that. Yeah. Yeah, those aluminum briefcases. I've got one of those somewhere. Um, There's Halliburton. Yeah, they're like yeah. fifteen hundred dollars for one yeah. of those suitcases, but they're not very good in a plane crash. <laughs> Alan's Alan's Samsonite suitcase. He used to laugh at me. He said, "You had those, those damn thousand dollar suitcases," and I had that blue Samsonite. <laughs> it was but, perfect, yeah, it was perfect condition. Your shit busted all open. Yeah, you remember. <laughs> that commercial with the uh, gorilla and the samsonite suit yeah yeah all them samsonites man they came through in flying colors man yeah. everybody else's suitcases were all just trash man but god when he was talking about the, the you couldn't even he said you couldn't even tell that was an airplane it just looked uh -huh. like crumpled up metal 
He said you could. <clears throat> said, you, he said he couldn't even tell it was an airplane. It just like like crumpled up metal. And to think I was in that thing, God, oh that's, yeah, that's amazing. And this, and this, I listened to this next interview, uh, Sheriff J.P. McClendon, who's coming on uh, right after the jibber jabber here, and he's going to uh, be uh, getting interviewed by Mike O'Hara. And wait till you hear what he says, man. This guy, he, yeah, he pretty much the same stuff, but there's a little little bit of new information and in everything that we didn't know, you know, so. <laughs> everybody's uh, got a different story man i mean everybody yeah. does if, if somebody sees something they, they everybody's got a different story everybody on that plane's got a different story here all the rescuers have a different story because y'all everybody sees something different you know and that's what they see that's what they say and mike said o'hare the guy that interviewed him said that if it weren't for the helicopters would they have found you guys and he said no way yeah, no way. Yeah, it was right. it was because the the helicopter or you guys would have been stuck out there all night and no tell. Yeah, yeah. Happened. Some of us would have died. Yeah, that's what I said. That's what I said. Some of us would have died for sure. And he was talking about somebody had a piece of of a limb stuck in their stomach. Um, I'm kind of thinking that was Leon. I had a I had a a limb stuck in my arm. You did? Not a. I, yeah. I, I don't know. I was unconscious, but yeah, I had a well, somebody. He I had said a, a big. I, guy. You could see where there was a. You could see where there was something stuck in my arm there. You know, he said but, it was a big guy, and he was leaning against a tree, and he had a piece of of a limb stuck in his abdomen, and well, that's the first thing he remembered seeing. Oh this wow! Jay, this sheriff J. P. McClendon. So. Yeah, I had all kind of scrapes, especially on my feet. That's what they said. It ripped the ripped the floor right out from under us. You know. Well, it was you can't even tell it was a plane except for the tail. It messed my feet up. I guess it ripped my shoe. I don't know. I had like poison ivy on my feet, and I had gouges in my arm. These two gouges in my arm, and all my ribs were broken, and you know, just and I was just. <laughs> massive yeah. concussion well we'll uh we'll listen to that um interview then craig and we'll just do go ahead and wrap it up man and um you guys can can uh and like i say, always say with the other ones if if you're uh if you're a family member of anybody that was on that plane do not listen to this because and i'm sure you probably wouldn't anyway but yeah it's it's too graphic for stuff like that and I mean, it, it, somebody that wasn't on the plane might not really <laughs> like it, but it's it's some good information, um, and it's all got to come out. So um, we just want that's what we want to do is just put it all out there. And Kent Griffith, you know, he's going to donate all this stuff um, for for the public to hear, to see, to listen to. So it's all getting donated. It's going to be public information. So we're just putting it out there before anybody else hears it that's all so we just go ahead and wrap her up craig yeah man i'm a little bit out of it this morning <laughs> like all mornings yeah i don't know all you right got, here we you go. got up at 4 20 <laughs> yeah somebody asked what time we do these things yeah we often see 4 20 there was one time i barely got this thing back up by six yeah we have to try to finish them but yeah sometimes when you've got these these end things the editing gets weird with the since, since this all come from one reel you know but sometimes yeah. they, they're a little they're a little funky <laughs> When yeah. you left me to do my own, it was it was right at six o'clock by the time I got this thing up. I got this thing up, but uh, all right, enough jibber jabber. That was uh, podcast one hundred and forty four of the Stone Roadie Show, and uh, you know, happy trails to you until we meet again. And uh, cut. <laughs> I wasn't really? sure if then, but I was one of the first ones over there. I don't know. You were one of the first ones on the scene?
Yes, sir. Oh, terrific. Would you have time to talk about it, or? Yes, sir. Oh, terrific. And what would your name be? Sheriff McClendon. McClendon. Okay. McClendon. Okay. I, I guess, um, could you please, like, please tell me, like, in your own words, uh, how you knew about it and what you saw when you got there? Nah, let me just start from the start. Okay. For me? Yeah, because I'm going to be here a bit. Uh, we, like I say, I don't live too far from there, and the first... We, I knew about it. It was a helicopter flying around over my house with a high beam light or whatever it would be called shining down, you know. Mm-hmm. Just kind of lighting up everything. And they were looking for the plane. Uh, so then it came on TV. Uh, Bad Root Station. There had been a Leonard Skinner plane crash. And uh, so we took off over there. My wife was a nurse, and she was working at the local hospital. And uh, it, was, it was just a hell of a mess. It it landed in a in a hardwood timber thicket. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. And uh, if it had been, uh, oh heck. 25 yards uh, from three directions, it would have missed this. It would have, it would have landed in an open field. So 100 Broken. feet either way, Approx- approximately 100 feet either way, it would have. Well, I'd say not over. I'm gonna just say 25 yards. That'd be 75 feet. Wow. This was kind of a triangle wood space there. Okay. Uh, it it just broke the top out of these trees and all and just crashed down to the ground and it was people just laying and standing and everything the first person I saw and I don't know who he was he was a big stout guy he had looked like a limb sticking in his stomach he was standing up against a, a tree uh, of course it was it was hard to get an ambulance in that to where they were, you know. It had to bring them out on stretches. Right. And uh, they just put them in the back of the ambulance. I mean, they were kind of threw them up in there like you would, I don't know what, you know, as many as they could get in there. And my wife went on the first trip to the hospital, and, of course, she stayed up there all night. And they, uh, 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 it was dope found, marijuana. There was marijuana found? Yes, sir. On the plane or? No, on the ground. On the ground. Those, these little old packs, I guess. Okay. I don't know if it's a little old pack. It's sealed, it was sealed up in there. Like maybe a pack for a cigarette or something. I don't know, just, I'm not that familiar with it. Right. Uh, of course, they kept uh, security on that thing for, I guess, weeks keep anybody from coming in there till all the uh, whatever the inspection of, to see what happened caused it to crash and all that mm-hmm. and then it was hauled off to a storage building in Brookhaven which is from there about 40 miles away okay. and that's about the last I heard of it it was people would come by oh even still Every now and then, uh, I run a store down there close to it, and we was kind of, you know, uh, you know how people stop if they don't, if they're from way off somewhere, a little old country store wanting to know if they're kind of in that area, if knew about where the Leonard Skinner plane crashed, and we've told many a person about it, you know. And, uh, but that's about all I know. Uh, well, uh, I just wonder if you like uh, actually you helped that pull rec- uh, pe- pe- people out of the wreckage. Yes. Sir. Okay. Approximately how many? It wasn't. I mean, they were just scattered over the ground. You know. They were just scattered everywhere, were they? You know. I mean, in different areas there. Okay. Uh, I don't. It was any kilo wrapped. 
seemed like maybe, I don't even remember how many died. Do you? Have you heard? Uh, six died, including the co-pilot and pilot. Yeah. Well, it, But they all, they all died upon impact. I, I, just, I can't remember all that. Like I say, it was in a hellacious of a place to get to. Uh. And uh, about three hours after it, I guess people was hearing it on the radio mm -hmm. and everything. And this is on a, well, a state highway uh, close close by there that you would come in and out to uh, it was vehicles for I guess a mile both sides of the road. People was coming off of 55 Highway. They was hearing it on the radio. They were coming off the interstate? Just, coming to, <laughs> just to see it? Just to see it, yes. Sir. Okay. And was that a hindrance at all towards uh, the rescue effort or? Do what now? Was that a hindrance to the rescue effort? Did that hurt the rescue effort at all? All these people coming well, to see it? Well, by the time they got there, every, we had everybody out. You had everybody out? Yes. Okay. And approximately how long were you on the scene of the crash site? Oh, I'd say probably uh, three or four hours. Three or four hours. I was just, I like the rest of it. I just want to see how many people after they got, got you know, got them out of there. How many people was going to come and where they was coming from? Right. Because this is off in a rural area, you know. Well, be exactly, it's 10 miles off 55 Highway. 10 miles west of the 55? West of 55. Okay. On Highway 568. 568. Okay. Uh, were you, while you were rescuing the uh, survivors and whatnot, were you had? Did you have any fear of fire or or th anything of that nature? No, sir. You had no fear. Okay. Did you know the plane had no fuel in it, or? Like, I don't know. Everybody was just trying to get them. You know, yeah. if you had to hear somebody, you're trying. To, it was dark, and then of course this plane uh, with the light was uh, trying to. You know, hadn't been fit. Well. I don't guess anybody would have lived to, to got them out of that because, like I say, in a wooded area like that, and it's dark, and, and, uh... Would you have found the plane even if it had not been for the helicopter? Sir? Would you have found the plane if it had not been for the helicopter overhead? No. Okay. No. That's how dark it was in there, was it? Right. No. No, they never found it. I mean, well... Well... That night. Not that night. Uh, some of them had was able to walk out of there, you know, to closest house was about oh, between a quarter and a and a half a mile if you're familiar with that kind of direction. Uh, not quite mile, it's probably half close to a half a mile from the from the highway down in there. Yeah, I guess, uh, was the plane in, if you can, I know it was like... It wasn't nothing left to it. It was too long. It was, not, okay. It was in one piece, three piece, or just... No, no. But it was just scattered over a large area there. See, it was, it, it done topped a bunch of those hardwood trees before it came down. For approximately how many feet or yards before it hit the first tree did it did it come to rest? Oh. Two. I don't know. Uh, probably 300 feet, 100 yards or something where it started topping them out. Do you think the pilot was trying to uh, to shoot for one of the open fields that was close to the... No, sir. No, sir. I don't believe because he, he couldn't have... He couldn't have made it? Yeah, he could have made he it. He could have? He didn't know it was open there, I don't believe. You know, it's dark. No. Oh, okay. Now, if it had been daytime, you know, uh, nine times out of ten or 99 times out of a hundred, they probably could have made it. And there would have, of course, been less casualties, probably. Right, right. Okay. Now, you knew beforehand that you went to the crash site. It was the Leonard Skinner band? Oh, uh, yeah, right, right. Okay. We heard that on the news. 
Leonard, the, the way it came out, Leonard Skinner's plane had crashed. Okay. And uh, see, we knew it wasn't far. <laughs> so, uh, all we had to do just follow the, the helicopter back over there. Right. And I guess well, your first, your, when you first come upon the scene, what what did you see exactly? Like, I'm just trying to picture in my mind as you walked through the trees in the hardwood thicket there. What was yeah. the first thing you saw? It, it was two different routes that you could get in there through open field, and uh, the first one that we tried to go in, you couldn't get close enough on because of the woods and old sloughs. Okay. You, if you know what a slough is, ditch. Yes. Deep ditch. And so we had to come back around, back out to the highway, and, and come around uh, through another uh, person's uh, field down in there. And when I walked up there, that's what I saw this guy standing up there that stick in his stomach. And by that time, the ambulance was there. Oh. See, that the ambulance had, had tried to come in from one way, and it had to come back around, too. Right. And all that was taking time. time. Now, from the time that you got there, I guess, till how long did it take for all of the survivors and the bodies and whatnot to uh, to get to the hospital? Was it like minutes or hours or? No, sir. I'd say uh, by ambulance, probably fifteen minutes, twenty. Minutes. Well, it was. Uh, I'm talking from like the plane itself or around the plane. It, it, it was uh, 18 miles to the hospital from there, so. Okay. Okay. And um, approximately how many help, like rescue workers were there helping that were uh, like not Coast Guard or guardsmen, just, uh, you know, county people like yourself and uh, Gerald Wall and, and whatnot. It, it wasn't Wall, it was Sheriff and it was Travis, I remember now. The Sheriff Travis? Yes, sir. Okay. Sheriff Travis. Okay. But approximately how many uh, of you were there? Oh, I don't know. It was it's kind of hard to tell. Well, we say, yeah, yeah, because the sightseer was coming in, too, you know. Cause right. They was willing to, to help, but uh, I would say 25. Okay. Was, was there, you know, shortly after uh, I got there. Okay, and one more question, if you don't mind. All right. Um, when you think about it, or someone brings it up, the plane crash and whatnot, what's the first thing that pops into your head? Oh, it was just terrible. Just terrible? I mean, when it could have, you know, I'm talking about in a split second, they would have, could have been out of the wood part, you see, in open field. Yes. It was a split-second decision, and he made the wrong one? Sir? He made the wrong decision, in other words. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can't thank you enough, sir. All right. You've helped me so much. And, uh... I Dallas, away. Holla, Alice. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. Bye-bye.